Hi kids, Easter Sunday is here and it's a great day for Easter egg hunts and eating lots of chocolate. But the real reason why we celebrate Easter is because Jesus came to earth to die on the cross for us and then to rise again to give us new life. Even though we don't get to come to church today, we can still celebrate Jesus at home with our families. Oh, bonjour, Pastor Karen. Hello, Kiki. What are you doing? I'm getting ready to tell a Bible story. Not just any Bible story, the Easter story. Oh, I love Easter. Oh, yes. What do you think of when you think of Easter? Oh, well, I like hunting for all the eggs in the backyard and all the decorations that I get to play with. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know Easter is celebrated all over the world? And today we're going to make sure that we know all the events of that first Easter and why it changed the world. <gasps> oh, how exciting. But what is in your box? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, so I have objects in my box to help tell the Easter story. Mm. And the object that most people think of when they think of Easter is the cross. Uh, the Easter in the story in the Bible tells us about the cross and the wonderful things it means. It's so important to us and to the world. You ready for the story? Oh, yes, I am. All right, here we go. So Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem to shouts of joy, welcomed like a much-loved king. Do you know that Jesus came to Jerusalem riding on a donkey? Oh, yes, like a parade. Yes. I love parades. Nice. And um, did they sing a Hosanna song? Yes. Yes, they did. How did you know that? When I was talking with my friend, Daffodil the Duck. Yes, Daffodil loved that Hosanna song. And they also waved the palm branches. <gasps> oh, just like that one. Yes, we'll put it right here. Everyone knew that Jesus was in town. And although many people loved him, most of the religious leaders hated him. Oh. Because of their hatred for Jesus, the religious leaders gathered and agreed to arrest Jesus and kill him. But they wanted to be sly about it. Oh, oh sly. Like when I'm trying to sneak up on my friend Daffodil. Oh, yes. Well, I think they wanted to be a little bit more shrewd than that. With so many people in Jerusalem, arresting Jesus could start a riot and it wasn't long before they found their inside man. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, came to them and offered to bring them to Jesus when there weren't others around. The leaders gave him 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus. I've got some coins in here to show you. I'll just pull them out, oh. put them right there. Mm -hmm. On the night that Jesus was going to be betrayed and arrested, he celebrated the Passover with his disciples. Passover was a holiday that they remembered the way that God rescued them from Egypt. And if you want to learn more about the Passover, you check out Exodus chapter 12. Okay, but this Passover was different. First, Jesus told his friends that one of them would betray him. Then Jesus used the bread and the wine on the table to explain to his friends he was going to give his own body and his own blood so that their sins could be forgiven. Got some bread in a cup in here. Oh, bread. I like bread. No, but you can't my, eat it. It's my oh, prop. Oh. On my cup. Jesus continued in Matthew 26, verse 2. As you know, the Passover feast is two days away. The Son of Man will be handed over to be nailed to a cross. Uh-oh. I know the next part of the story. It is kind of sad mm -hmm. and scary. Right? I know. But just remember, there is a happy ending. Okay. I think that I can do it. Oh, good. Okay. The same night... Jesus and his friends went to Gethsemane, a garden where they often gathered. So Jesus and his disciples are in the garden, and Jesus is praying, and he's praying. 
He knew it was coming, and he knew it was going to be brutal. But Jesus prayed, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Can you imagine this? Jesus went back to where his disciples were sleeping, and he woke up, woke them up. Matthew 26, verse 40 says, Then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men just keep watch with me for one hour, he asked Peter. They looked up and saw Judas leading a crowd of men with swords and clubs. Matthew 26, 47 and 48 says, While Jesus was speaking, Judas arrived and a large crowd was with him. They were carrying swords and clubs. The chief priests and the elders of the people who had sent them, Judas, who was going to hand Jesus over, had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man, he said. Arrest him. Then the soldiers arrested Jesus. No! Immediately, one of the disciples took out a sword and cut off a slave's ear. What? Wait, 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 wait. What? He cut off his ear? Ear? Yep, yep. But in Luke 22, it says, Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and he healed him. Oh, wow. You know, I just about lost an ear once. I got a little too close to the lawnmower. Oh, oh dear. Let's keep going. Jesus turned to his disciple and said, put the sword back. My father could have sent an army of angels to protect me. And suddenly, even though Jesus didn't seem at all afraid, all of the disciples were terrified, and they turned and they ran. Mm -hmm. Jesus was first taken to the house of the high priest. The leaders had a trial and decided to crucify him, but they needed an approval of a Roman ruler, Pilate. So early in the morning, they took Jesus to Pilate. Pilate knew Jesus was innocent, but like the other leaders, he didn't want to have a riot, so he sent Jesus away to be crucified. Jesus was beaten, mocked, and a crown of thorns was put on his head. You can read this whole story in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, uh, verses 57 to 67. Hey! I think I see some purple cloth in Yes, here. yes you and do. Is that a real crown of thorns? Oh no, it's not real, it's just a prop. So here we have our purple cloth, and we have our crown of thorns. Jesus was taken to a place called Golgotha and nailed to a cross. Let's pull out the cross here. Two other men were also led out with Jesus to be killed. Both of them had broken the law. The soldiers brought them to the place called the skull, and there they nailed Jesus to the cross. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Everybody who passed by insulted him as he suffered. Then at noon, it got dark, and it stayed dark for three hours. Around three, Jesus cried out, it is finished, and then he died. Then there was an earthquake. Even though, even the Roman soldiers that were guarding Jesus said, this was the Son of God. Matthew chapter 27, verse, 30, uh, verse 50 to 51 then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks split apart. Oh, no. I am so sad. We don't have to be so sad for too long. We know the ending. Oh, yes. Let's get to the end. Yes. One friend came and got Jesus' body down from the cross. He wrapped it and put it in the tomb. Pilate had Roman guards seal it and keep watch at the tomb. No one could get in or out. Oh, hey, 
There is a big rock in there. Mm -hmm. Is that to represent the stone that was to seal the tomb? Yes, you got it. The next day was the Sabbath, which meant no one went anywhere. But the day after that, as soon as it began to get light, some women, who were Jesus' friends, came to the tomb. They were bringing spices that they had prepared. Well, when they got there, what did they see? The stone was rolled away from the tomb entrance and there was an angel there who spoke to them. Oh, wow. Matthew 28, five and six says, then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. <gasps> yes, that is the happy ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that your happy dance? Oh, yes. I am happy too. The woman turned away from the tomb, afraid yet joyful. They probably thought, Jesus, if Jesus is alive, then everything he said is true. He is God's son. Suddenly, Mary looked up. There was Jesus. <gasps> she fell to the ground at his feet and worshipped him. Jesus was really alive. Matthew 28 verse 10 says, Jesus said to her, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Wow. Wow. Great story. Jesus went to the cross. He died and rose again, all because he loves us so much. And we want to tell others about Jesus, what he has done to everyone that will believe. Oh yes, I love this story so much and I remember all of it. I think that I am going to be like the disciples and go and tell my friend Daffodil about it. Wonderful. <laughs> Bye Kiki. Au revoir. Kids, have you ever thought about what the Easter story means to you? John 3.16 answers that question. It tells why God sent Jesus, it tells who Jesus is, and it tells us what happens when we believe in Jesus. Getting to know this verse helps us to know why we need Jesus. Let's read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The story of Jesus' resurrection and death is a high point in God's big story for us. The big story of redemption, the amazing events of this first Easter, gives us proof that God's plan to save us is true. The big idea that we need to remember, Jesus' death and resurrection changed the world by giving us salvation. Because of Easter, we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves us. We can be confident in the forgiveness of sin and in the promise that we can have eternal life in the presence with Jesus if we only believe. Do you want Jesus to be your savior? Would you like him to come into your life and ask him to forgive your sins? Let's talk through some Bible verses. I call them scripture steps into God's family. First, God wants you to become his child. First John 3 verse 1 says, See what amazing love the Father has given us. Because of it, we are called children of God, and that's what we really are. Second, we have done wrong things. You, I, every person in the world has done wrong. And the Bible calls that word sin. Romans 6.23 says, when you sin, the pay you get is death. But God's gift is eternal life. And that's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. God loves you so much. God sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sin. 
This is good news. 1 John chapter 4, verse 14 says, The Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. He loves us so much, He sent His Son to die on the cross to take our punishment for our sin. Because Jesus had never sinned, He is the only one who can take the punishment for our sin. On that third day after Jesus died, what happened? He rose from the dead. Are you sorry for your sins? Say to God that you are sorry and ask Jesus for forgiveness. 1 John 1 9 says, But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sin, He will forgive us our sin. He will forgive every wrong thing we have ever done. He will make us pure. That's amazing. The Bible says that when you believe that Jesus is God's Son and that He is alive today, you receive God's gift of eternal life. All you have to do is believe that Jesus is God's Son. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, Some people did accept Him and did believe in His name. He gave them the right to become children of God. If you receive that gift of salvation today, this makes you a child of God. This means that God is with you now and forever. Should we say a prayer? Let's do it. We can say our salvation prayer, our salvation poem. Jesus, you died upon a cross and rose again to save the lost. Forgive me now of all my sin Come be my Savior, Lord, and friend. Change my life and make it new, and help me, Lord, to live for you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer the first time, you've become a child of God. Jesus has come in. He's forgiven your sin. He's going to be your Lord and Savior. You have received the gift of eternal life living with Him someday in heaven. Wow. Amen. Thanks for watching, you guys. Have a great Easter Sunday.